and the merciful, I send praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I send peace and blessings to the Prophet Muhammad, his companions, all those who call to his way to the day of judgment. As to what follows, we begin with the greeting words of the righteous, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The fourth year of the prophethood of Muhammad ibn Abdullah, peace be upon him, was a year of great persecution. The Prophet had brought a message of Tawheed, of the oneness of God. He taught his people not to bow down to idols, not to disrespect their parents, not to torture and harm the innocent, not to base their society upon nationalism. But they refused to accept this message, and they began to torture him and his followers in the most horrible fashion. By the fifth year, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If you were to go to Abyssinia, Al-Habasha, it would be better for you. The king will not tolerate injustice, and it is a land of truth. Go there till Allah relieves you from your distress. After this permission was given, a group of twelve men and four women left for Abyssinia. Among them was Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, and the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him named Ruqayya. After having reached Abyssinia and staying for at least a few months, they received a false report from Mecca that all of the people of Mecca had embraced Islam. When they heard this they were overjoyed and they returned to Mecca to find that the persecution had intensified. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, again sent his endangered Sahaba to the land of Ethiopia. This time another group of 83 men and 19 women left and crossed the Red Sea. They left Mecca in secret and they crossed into the Red Sea and into Ethiopia. When they reached the land of Ethiopia, they found a people who were steeped in the original beliefs of Christianity. They found the land of justice, and they found a righteous king. Who was this righteous emperor, and what was this land? It is reported that the land of Ethiopia was a land with an ancient history. And the leader who had inherited the power of this ancient society was Ashama ibn Abjar. The title given to him was an Najashi or the Negus. He was the king and inheritor to a great empire called Aksum. This empire was founded long before Christ, but by the year, by, by the centuries, the third to the sixth century, it became the greatest market in northeast Africa. Merchants were trading with Aksum from all the way north on the Nile and from the Indian Ocean. The city of Aksum also claimed to contain the Ark of the Covenant, which had come from the Prophet Suleiman, alayhi salam, from Solomon and from Sheba, and was brought, according to their legends, to Ethiopia by their son Menelik. So when the Sahaba were safely living in Aksum, Quraysh sent two emissaries, Amr ibn al-As, who later became a famous Muslim, and Abdullahi 
Ibn al-Rabi'ah. They came representing the polytheists of Mecca. And they brought expensive gifts in order to bribe the generals and the army and to bribe the king. They sought a, an audience with the king and thereby stated that these people who you have given shelter to have forsaken their religion and they have not accepted yours. But the Najashi replied to them and said, No, by God, I will not surrender them. No people who have sought my protection, settled in my country, and asked for protection will be let loose. If they are as they are, I will give them up to them and send them back to their own people. But if what they say is false, I will protect them and see that they receive proper hospitality while under my protection. The Nagus then, the Najashi, summoned the Muslims and he asked them to represent themselves. What do you stand for? What is the basic teachings of your Prophet? And one of the famous companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Jaffa ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an, he stood up and he addressed the king in the following words. O king, we were plunged in the depth of ignorance and barbarism. We worship idols. We lived in an unclean life. We ate dead meat. We spoke abominations. We did not respect our neighbors. We knew no laws but that of the strong. And then Allah raised up among us a man whose birth, truthfulness, and honesty were well known to us. He called us to the oneness of Allah. He taught us to speak the truth, to be faithful to our trusts, to be merciful, to regard the rights of our neighbors and our kith and kin. He forbade us from speaking evil to women and from eating the, the, the substances or the wealth of the orphaned. He ordered us to stay away from evil and abstain from evil in all forms. He taught us to offer prayers, to give in charity, and to observe fasting. We believed in Him and we accepted His teachings. He taught us not to associate partners with Allah and He taught us that we should live a good life. For this, we have been tortured and injured and not finding safety amongst our own people, we have come to your country seeking protection from oppression. The Nagus then asked Jaffa ibn Abi Talib an, to read something from the Book of Allah, read something from your scriptures. And Jaffa, being a very intelligent uh, and well-trained companion, read from Surah Maryam, when he read from this beautiful chapter that told the story of Mary, of Maryam, may Allah be pleased with her, and the birth of Jesus, and the miracles happening at this time, Najashi, recognizing the presence of the Creator, wept. His bishops and all in the, in the court also wept. And Najashi stated of a truth this and what Jesus brought have come from the same place. You too may go. He sent away Quraysh. He said, by God, I will never give them up. They shall not be betrayed. And so Najashi gave a strong representation of a righteous king. But Amr ibn al-As, being very cunning at that point in his life, didn't give up. The next day he returned to the Najashi and he stated, these people, they say that Jesus, the son of Mary, is a creation. He is not a God. He's not the son of God. Jaffa ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an was brought and he answered, we say about him that which our prophet has brought us, that Jesus is the slave of God, his apostle, his spirit, and his word which was cast into Mary, the Blessed Virgin. When Najashi heard this, he picked up a, a stick and he said, By God, Jesus, the Son of Mary, does not exceed what you have said by the length of a stick. Then Najashi said, 
He who curses you will be fined. Not for a mountain of gold will I allow you, will I allow a man to hurt you. Go free and live within my lands. And so the Najashi, in accordance with the revelation that had come to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, who was guided by the Creator of the heavens and the earth, was a righteous person. He would not allow anyone to be oppressed within his country. His land was a land of truth. And the Muslims were able to enjoy sanctuary in a Christian land. This is an important aspect of history that needs to be brought out. With misunderstandings concerning the entrance of Islam into Africa, this is the first contact. Muslims did not come as conquerors. They did not come as an imperialistic army, but they came as refugees, seeking the help of a righteous Christian king. After this, a rebellion broke out. The Sahaba hid and sent a Zubair ibn al-Awam radiallahu an to see what had happened. But by the will of Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Najashi prevailed. Ibn Ishaq, the great uh, biographer of the Prophet, peace be upon him, reports, and he speaks about the Sahaba, and this is a very interesting uh, report, because he shows the, Suha- the Sahaba now, companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, making a prayer for the Christian emperor. And he writes that the Sahaba said, We prayed to Allah to give Najashi victory over his enemies and to establish him in his country. As they were making their dua, while they were praying, Az-Zubair ibn al-Awam radiallahu an returned with the news of the victory of Najashi. And so they stayed in Al-Habasha until the second Hijrah, the major migration that was made from Mecca to Medina. This is a powerful story. This is a powerful coming together of monotheism where the teachings that came to, to Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, and the teachings that came to Muhammad, peace be upon him, manifest themselves within their followers, and the followers go beyond the distance of prophets. They go beyond the fact that they were from different tribes, and they unite under the oneness of God. Let us return after a short break to hear more about this illustrious emperor of Abyssinia. And if you look into the early tafsir, early exegesis of the Quran, you will find that uh, all the mufassirin were trying to find out where are the seven earths. Earthquakes, natural or artificial, can delineate the boundaries between seven different zones within the earth. The, the conclusion that we have seven different layers within the earth came to not only in the 20th century. The true believer would prostrate down in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of that prostration will reach the seventh earth. peace and blessings be upon him, sent a very important letter with his companions. In this, he stated the following, In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, from Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, to the great Najashi of Abyssinia, peace be upon he who follows the guidance. As to what follows, verily for you I praise Allah, the one whom there is no deity except him the sole king, the holy, the source of peace, the protector, and the guardian. I bear witness that Jesus, the son of Maryam, is the spirit belonging to Allah, and his word 